This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, we're going to be talking about dog pain. The signs, the causes, along with the safe and effective remedies that you can use at home. So if you suspect your dog is in pain, the first thing you want to start out with is having a basic veterinary exam. Either you're going to your veterinarian or you're going to be performing the exam at home yourself. For instance, Lewis here, he's been limping on his front left leg. And in part, what I've done is done a basic exam of him. You know, I've started out by palpating his toes. I moved up to palpate his wrist, his carpus. And found on palpation that he was a little bit tender on palpating his elbow. When I sort of putting a little bit of pressure, especially in the inside part of the elbow, he was resisting. And it feels a little bit thickened. Based on that and doing that basic exam, I mean that's suggestive of him having some elbow arthritis. And based on his age of being 11 and a half years, I'd expect him to have some of that. Signs of pain are often very subtle and can be difficult to see. Your dog may be reluctant to move, to jump up, or have difficulty rising after lying down. Um, he may tremble, eat or drink less, be generally depressed, or panting a lot more. There can be lameness, pain on palpation of a specific area of the body, an increased heart rate and breathing, and vocalization where your dog is yelping or whining a lot. There can be behavioral changes such as being more aggressive or the opposite, just not really reacting to being petted or groomed. The causes of pain in dogs can be many, but arthritis is at the top of the list. Most dog arthritis is due to joint wear and tear, the loss of protective cartilage, and subsequent joint inflammation and pain. And this can be seen in this x-ray where this dog has hip dysplasia. There can be back disorders such as spondylosis where the vertebrae fuses, disc disease, and pinched nerves. There, your dog may have chronic allergies with inflamed skin which can cause irritation and that can be very painful. Dog cancer can affect the bones, the skin, the organs, and it has many signs, but one of them is being very painful. And then there can be dental disorders, such as a tooth root abscess. And it, can, it can be very painful. So if your dog has a more chronic condition, such as arthritis, I would suggest you use some of the safer home remedies before you use the more potent conventional veterinary drugs. Glucosamine, MSM, chondroitin, and essential fatty acids. Glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, and essential fatty acids are the four most important ingredients that you should have in any type of supplement that is helping your dog, specifically with arthritis and chronic pain. Um, in terms of looking at the doses, you want to have 100 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of glucosamine, a minimum of 50 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of chondroitin, and 100 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of MSM. I have those similar levels in my supplement, the Ultimate Canine Health Formula, but you can find those in many specific arthritic supplements for dogs. I also want to reiterate the importance of having adequate levels of essential fatty acids in your dog's diet. Um, when you're looking at a dose, you want to make sure that you're giving 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds daily. I mean, so here is just very inexpensive flax oil that I picked up at the co-op. And when you're looking at a dose, you're looking at one tablespoon for 40 to 50 pounds of body weight of dog daily. Arnica is used for trauma, sudden pain, including back pain, such as prolapsing discs and spondylosis. Homeopathic remedies can be very effective for pain relief in your dog, and more importantly, they come without any side effects. Um, this here is Arnica 30C. Um, it is the most important homeopathic, and it's readily available. In terms of looking at a dose, I'm giving one 30C capsule for 10 to 20 pounds of body weight, and that can be given every one to two hours in any type of acute pain. Arnica is also available as a gel and in combination with other homeopathics, such as Tromio. The topical cream is very beneficial for local areas, such as a painful knee. The herb valerian is the most helpful for sudden pain. This very effective herb is used to release the muscle spasms that can be triggered from a compressed disc. The dose of the tincture is 0.1 mils per 10 pounds given twice daily. Aspirin is safe to use with dogs, but never with cats. The ASA dose is 325 milligrams, that's one regular tablet, for 40 pounds of body weight given twice daily. So you're giving a quarter of a tablet to a 10 pound dog. If side effects are seen, such as diarrhea or vomiting, then stop. 
you know, I recommend that you use the uncoated regular aspirin as the coated aspirin can pass right through your pet. Be cautious if you're using aspirin if your dog has underlying liver disease, kidney disease, or is on any other veterinary medications. In those situations, you need to consult your veterinarian before using aspirin. Acupressure is one of the most overlooked options for alternative forms of pain control. I want to show you two different points, ones that I think you're all able to use, and they may actually help your dog right now if your dog is in pain. So the first two points are called the BL60, the KI3 point. So you want to find this webbing. It's webbing here in the back of your dog's leg. It's called the hawk. So this area, this joint is called the hawk joint. And we're finding that flap of skin that's in between this big tendon here, your dog's Achilles tendon, um, and the bone, the tibia. So, and what you're doing, so the BL60 point is also known as the aspirin joint, the aspirin point. So you put your thumb on there, on the that's on the outside of the flap, and the inside point is called the KI3 point. So you, you can put your thumb and forefinger together and hold that point. You want to put enough pressure to dent the skin, but not too much pressure that it's painful, and just hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. The next healing touch technique I want to show you is massage. I'm going to show you three basic massage techniques to start with in your dog. One is called effleurage. And that's where you're just warming up the muscles. We're doing these long, slow strokes. So it's not uncommon for our dogs to have painful backs, especially as they're getting older, and they can have some arthritis in between their vertebrae joints. So we're starting up by warming up that back, just these long, slow strokes. If it's over your dog's hip, just do those slow strokes over your dog's hip. We're just trying to warm up those muscle bellies. Then the next thing I want you to do is a technique called petrissage. And that's where you're using almost like a karate chop motion. And we're doing that over on either side of those big muscles on, on the either side of Lewis's vertebrae. So we're warming up those big back muscles. It's called petrissage. This also works great on these big muscle bellies, big quads on, over top of your dog's hip joints. And then the next technique I want to show you is using your thumb. Your thumb or your forefinger. And we're making these circular motions. This works great when we're dealing with these big back muscles, these big lumbar spinal muscles. I'm making these circular motions right next to the vertebrae, putting moderate pressure on these back muscles. And then if I find an area where there's almost feels like a little bulge or a little knot in that muscle belly, that's more indicative of a, a muscle that is in some form of spasm. So what you want to do then is Put moderate pressure on that spasm area. Hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. And then release. So there's are three key basic massage techniques that really can help your dog if they're in pain. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do right now is click that link, that link in the box below, and I'll send you my free books and videos on how to treat your pets at home with my top natural remedies.